Hello, welcome back on our series on attribution and customer journey analytics. Today we want to jump into some comparison of different attribution models and how they differently evaluate customer journeys and what you can expect from them. Okay, one example customer journey, which we use for comparing the different um, attribution models. Here I have a customer journey, actually it's a, it's a real one from one of our customers. So uh, it uh, consists of like four sessions. The first touch point was by social. Then one day later, it was a SEM non-brand session. Two days later, SEM branded session. And five days later, a customer came back via direct and converted. Here's also some insights on the engagement, like on brief engagement what we had in the session. So the first session had like 10 page views, nine of them could be counted as product detail views or product detail uh, searches. Then uh, in the second session we have 11 page views in total, five one are like a detail level. Uh, the third session only had like two page views, none of them is checkout or uh, product detail views. And the last session where the conversion was happening, we have nine page views, five of them are product detail and uh, two checkout page views. Okay, let's look at the evaluation of the first basic attribution models. So we start off with the last click. Okay, last click, as the name says, the whole attribution weight goes to the last session in the customer journey, where the conversion is happening. Here, made the full conversion, nothing here, nothing here, and nothing here. The next one is the last non-direct, actually the default attribution model by Google Analytics. And it says, okay, we would like to take the last session. If that is direct, we look if there's any non-direct before, and then that gets everything. So in our example, this is direct, gets nothing. Here's something non-direct, gets everything. And uh, the first two get also nothing. So now the next, uh, very uh, simplistic model is the first click. So when you say like, okay, we don't want to put the weight on the, on the end, more on the demand creation, then this one says like, okay, the first touch point made everything. So here's a one, zero, zero, and zero here. The next one is called like linear, or actually it's kind of more like even. It means like we give every session in the customer journey an equal weight because we don't know anything, so we give like all of them the same. So we have like four sessions in the customer journey, and first one gets 0.25, second one 0.25, third one 0.25, and the last one also 0.25. The next uh, attribution model is called time decay. With this one, the idea behind it is that we give the most recent session, so the last session in the customer journey, the highest weight, the next one, the next highest weight, and so we go slowly down, and then we have like linear decay in this one. So that's why this gets the first session gets at point one then, second session point two, third session point three, and the last session point four. So you see already highest and then slightly less. And also a very popular model is also called the bath tube model or the U-shape model. And in this, like, we put like a U-shape on the customer journey. Often it's worked with, uh, with the percentages like 40% for the first session, 40% for the last session, and 20% for all in the middle sessions. So then we have here 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.4. So these are the very basic attribution models. You see it already how they evaluate it. So it's completely, they take it like from the sequencing of the different sessions within the customer journey. And so it's pretty much, it's only the position the customer journey take into account. They don't take a timing like four days, two days or one days into account. They also don't take any engagement into account. So the, for them it doesn't matter if you have here like more page views in here, if you have like checkout page views, detailed page views. It's simple like where we are in the customer journey and therefore we give the attribution here. Let's jump into some more advanced attribution models now. Okay. So more advanced models actually would be the uh, rule-based model. Okay, rule-based model that can be kind of like everything. But just to give you one example, is like um, you could define like your own rules, how you want to evaluate different sessions if they show different criteria. For example, we could say like um, one page view equals one point, and uh, one uh, checkout page view page view equals 10 points. 
we give a weight for like if a, a session comes from branded or direct channel, we discount it with a weight of 0.5. So like direct and brand, uh, we have a 0.5 weight. And we have like anything which is like uh, social or, um, or coming from non-brand. We give it a weight of like 1.5. So kind of like you, you see you can make all kind of like your rules up and then it kind of like the concept from is you define your own rules and then you apply them to each customer journey. Okay, let's have a look how this uh, rule-based uh, system now comes together. So the idea is that you have your rules and you apply them to each session and then you just give them points. In the end, you uh, standardize the points. So the first one is like we have uh, 10 page views. We have no checkout page views, so we have like um, uh, 10 points, but we have a weight of 1.5 for social. So it gives us like uh, 15 points here. Let's keep this up as a small number, 15 points. Um, second session has 11 page views, plus we have also weight 1.5, so gives us like 16.5. The uh, third uh, session has like two page, uh, page views, so it's like two, but we discounted brand, so it only gets one point. And the last session has like, uh, has like uh, nine page views, but also two checkout page views. So in total, and uh, we have like, uh, we have discount also direct, discount by 50%. So we give this here like 14.5. In total, this makes then, let's put this here, the sum of all the points what we give for this customer journey is 47. Therefore, our evaluation is like point 32, 0 0.35, 0 0.02, and 0 0.31. You see already it's kind of like very arbitrary rules um, are applied here and they are kind of like um, just it's like what you what you think what you make here you will then see back so kind of like when you give like more weights now to the product uh, detail uh, pages or you give like less discount to brand and direct then this completely changes but it comes like from the rules what you first give into in so you have to be very careful here that you're not creating too much self-fulfilling prophecies because that's everything is like based completely on the rules what you give in and they're not coming out of the data so now um, I hope you had already looked at our IHC attribution model. How would our IHC attribution model like evaluate the session, uh, the session in this customer journey? So first of all, our uh, IHC model learns from all similar customer journeys from this client. So we know kind of like what does it know, what does it mean if there's one day or two days or five days between two consecutive sessions. Is this normal? Is this like a more uh, restarting the engaging of the client? And also we evaluate and also like the detailed page views and the checkout page views. So first of all, what the IHC is does, it splits the uh, attribution into three phases, and that is the initializer phase, the holder phase, and the closer phase. All right, for the initializer, holder, closer, and then the joint IHC. Uh, the IHC model would actually give for this client's evaluation was that uh, initializer is the first session as initializer of 0.77. The uh, second session has nothing, it was like a super fast follow-up. The third session has a very small 0 0.05 and the last session has a 0 0.18 because for five days it was restarted the engagement again. The um, holder is evaluated as 0 0.29, the second session 0 0.61 because there's a high uh, engagement here also. Then the last one has like, uh, the third one has like no, because there's no uh, uh, detail views here. And the last one has a holder of 0 0.1. Um, closer is like 0, 0, 0, and 1. Because here of the only session, which is like close, uh, even like the only session in the whole customer journey with uh, checkout engagement is the last session here. And this gives us like a joint, Attribution of 0 0.39, 0 0.16, 0 
0.02 and 0.43. So, um, and that comes now from the IHC attribution. You see this model really takes into account also what is the timing between the different sessions, what is the engagement in the session. Okay, that is what the rule base also took into account. But the big difference, and therefore I'm referring to the um, other IHC videos, is that the IHC takes this evaluation of the engagement and the timings out from the data. So we learn on your customer journey data set and then we take the eva uh, evaluation out from this and it's not coming from some outside rules. Okay, now you may say, Alvin, that is not the real full story. Um, yes, there are like two uh, more advanced models and I want to go into them, what's behind them, because you cannot completely calculate them from just one customer journey. So uh, the first one is like the Shapley value. So the idea actually comes from uh, cooperative games and um, the idea is that you have multiple players and they can uh, play together in a collusion or they can play alone. And the idea is what is actually the added value of having this player in your team. So, um, and actually that's behind what, uh, what Google had as like their data-driven attribution model. And the basic idea behind this one is that they, you also group customer journeys into segments together by the channels which are in the customer journey. So for example, we have here uh, social followed by uh, SEM, search engine marketing, followed by a direct. And this segment we see has a conversion rate of let's say CVR of like 2.3%. And now we can have a look at the different sequence. And let's say we have only like social in the customer journey and direct. And this shows a conversion rate of like 1.7. So therefore, from this one, we can conclude that um, having uh, search engine marketing in our customer journey gives us an, uh, a marginal uh, value of 0.5 because having this in the customer journey increases the conversion rate. So therefore, that is the value of having SEM within the customer journey with social and direct. Uh, M here is 0.5% in the CVR. So that is the concept. Of course, now you would calculate this over all other customer uh, journey sequences, but that is the concept of the Chapley value. So it kind of like the, the channels are seen as like a collusion of, uh, of players. They can play together or not together. And they have like a, a reward, which is the conversion rate. And therefore we can uh, use this concept from, uh, from game theory. It's called Chapley value to really what is the value of having this player together playing there. The other concept is called like a Markov chain. So it's kind of like it's a, it's a state. And um, usually it's like modeled by uh, a customer is like has a, every touch point, every session is a state. So we have here, let's say we have, uh, we start with the social off. So we have a social state. And from this one we have like, we can move forward, that uh, the customer can move forward that's the next touch point with uh, search engine marketing. And uh, this goes forward with, let's say, Point four, uh, the customer can stay with point two, uh, that the next touch point is also social, or we can say the customer is lost with 0 0.4. And from the SEM, the customer can go forward to uh, direct, and from direct is also a way to have like the conversion. Or let's say that is like 0.7, that is like a 0.1, but it can also be lost here at this point, 0.2. So you see already with this kind of like Markov concept, we can have different states and the customer is always like described by being in a certain state and can transition from state to state and these states are our marketing touch points. 
and uh, you see already like uh, like both of the what, what we see a bit of the, the, the weaknesses of these models are they are kind of like very complex and they also stop from their complexity how deep they go uh, they stop at a very high level because you now you can imagine this if you would have uh, this like on, on keyword level on ad level on anything like this so then it's like when it's a super complex like Markov chain and then the curse of dimensionality kicks in and you cannot compute anything because also you cannot resolve everything to its lowest level because you need to have the transition probabilities here the same for this uh, Shapley value it's like it only works like on channel level or on big campaigns, but you cannot really go down on lower level because then you don't have like too much uh, database to really make your evaluation on the lower level and to really see what is the uplift and conversion rates if you're only like with one or two uh, observations in this. Okay, let me give you an example why it's so important to always consider to what level you're aggregating your customer journeys to use a certain model. I sampled 10,000 customer journeys um, with uh, more than two sessions. So I just sampled them and that is my base. And now I look like how many customer journeys or different distinct customer journeys I still see if I'm at different levels of abstracting what defines a customer journey. So first thing what I was doing is like, I was just taking like which channels are in the customer journey and so kind of making the set of the channels. So in this one we have like already 3,450 customer journeys by set of channels. So this one is only considering that we have here, for example, we have direct and social in the customer journey. It does not consider that there may be multiple direct and multiple social sessions or the order, doesn't matter yet. Even then we have from 10,000 already go down, uh, go up to like 3,450 customer journeys. The second set point is like that, ask, okay, now I want to describe the customer journey by really the order of all channels and also if they're repeated. So then we easily get up to like 7,800. 93 customer journeys and that is like the channel order. So for example here you can consider it's really like SEM, SEM, social, this defines like one customer journey. And now if I would take like all uh, traffic dimensions into account. So it not just takes the channel name, but also like UTM source, UTM medium, content term, uh, what ad group was it, um, what campaign was it, what ad set, what keyword was it. So if I take all this resolution in and also keeping uh, this in the, in the order in, then we go up to, what was it? 8,605 customer journeys. That is like my um, sequence, sequence all traffic. So you see already from our 10,000, we get now the more details we want to describe, actually the customer journeys, the more distinct ones we see. And at the next level, so so far I didn't took any timing into account. I just know, okay, see, SEM was here, then it was somewhere SEM, but what's the timing between? I didn't take into account. So if we take also the timing in days into account between consecutive sessions, then we come to uh, 9,453 customer journeys. That is like traffic sequence, plus uh, intercession days. So, so you see already now, and we have, so far we have not taken into account anything from engagement. So we didn't say how many page views a session has. Is there, does a session does it contain um, also detailed views or checkout uh, engagement? So we didn't took anything like this in the, into account and we already from our 10,000 customer journeys, we're already up to 9,453. So my point, what I want to make, like every customer journey is unique and uh, be aware if you work with models which work, which need aggregation, that you also lose a lot of information of what really drives your customer. Because in the end, you need to simplify a lot 
these, uh, the, the data set to apply these kind of models and then you're even ending up with kind of like complex models but they will also just give you information on this channel level. So if you're asking really um, what uh, keyword, what ad group, what ad set, what ad is what's the attribution in it or also when the, um, the value of the attribution was applied then you need to work with different attribution models. Okay, so far for the attribution model comparison. If you have questions, please uh, contact us and uh, I hope to see you soon in one of our following videos.